Before I talk about section breaks, I want to go over page breaks so that way you can compare and contrast between the two and know that there is a difference. As you recall, when you start typing on the first page here and you get to the bottom and you run out of room, if you just keep on typing, it'll automatically insert a page break and give you page two. Then you keep on typing, inserts the next page break, automatically you get page three, four, five, six, and so on. Or you can manually insert a page break yourself, like just go ahead and put your cursor somewhere where you want to go ahead and insert a break. So I have two pages. You can see that down in the status bar, page two of two that I'm on. And if I insert a page break here, because it can't take oregano and squish it back up onto page one because there's no more room, that will be on the second page. And then everything at the point of this cursor on down will be on page three. So come up here, click on the page layout, go to page setup, click on the breaks, and there it is, page break. Of course, we have page breaks and section breaks, but let's do a simple page break and boom, there we go. Down here in the status bar, we have three pages. There's page three. There's page two and page one. I'm going to go ahead and undo that now. You can see the uh, page break, that big white gap between page one and two, that when you double click on it, closes the gap, gets rid of all that extra white space, so it's easier to transition when you're reading from the bottom of page one to page two and so on. So now that you know what a page break is, and you can actually see the break in between your pages, what about section breaks? Let's come up here, click on the breaks drop down arrow, and the two that I want to cover here are next page and continuous because the even and odd pages, basically I covered that in our headers and footer training videos, but you can also insert them here. Let me give you the idea or the concept behind our section breaks first. First of all, we have the continuous break. You can see on that page where you have blue lines here and then red lines down below. A continuous break means that when you apply formatting to that section above the section break, it won't affect the point from that section on or vice versa. So let me go ahead and click off in a blank area and show you. Let's say that I want to go ahead and add two columns to my bulleted list here. If I go ahead and click within the bulleted list and come up here and click on the columns drop down arrow and select two, guess what? My entire document is in two columns. Ah, no, I don't want that. So instead, let me go ahead and hit undo, and I want to be able to section this off, saying, okay, let me insert a section break here by coming up here, clicking on the breaks drop down arrow, and say continuous. When I insert it, it doesn't actually put in a break that you can see. If you want to see it, then you have to go to your home tab to the paragraph group, click on your show hide codes, and you can barely see it over there because it's being squished by all the other text. If I go ahead and delete the text here, you can see that it's there. It just opens up and it says, okay, this is a section break. Let me go ahead and undo that. But it's still there. In fact, there are times when it's so squishy, you cannot even see if you inserted a section break. Let me go ahead and hit undo. So how do you know what section you're in after you insert the section break? How can you see? Well, if you come down here on the status bar and right click and check section, and then click off, when it's checked, you can see I'm in section one. When I click below the line there, the code, you can see I'm in section two. But what if the code cannot be seen and you want to go to section two, but you can't figure out when you keep clicking down where it's at? And it keeps on saying section one. Well, if you have 5,000 pages, boy, that's a lot of work. What you can do is hit the F5 key on the keyboard, go to the Go To tab, select Section, and you can see that the section number, well, I previously was working with this, it remembered it. So you can see I'm in Section 2 right now, type in Section 1, click Go To, and boom, it takes me right to it. You can see it now says Section 1. So that's one way to get around it. Let me go ahead and scroll down, click below that section break, and let me go ahead and apply my two columns. Come up here, Page Layout tab, select the columns, go to 2, and it applied it to everything below that section break, not above, because those aren't in two columns, it's a single column. But when I scroll down, it applied it to everything from that point on all the way to the end of the document. Well, I don't want my uh, closing paragraph to be in a column, so what I need to do, let me go ahead and undo that. I still have my original section break. Let me scroll down and section this off. That being the key word, you're sectioning off parts of your document here, so what you do in one section doesn't affect the other. So now I have the first section break above the bulleted list. Now I'm going to close it off with another section break. Come up here, click on breaks, go down to continuous, and you can see it adds it right there. It's not squished, so we can obviously see that it's inserted right there. So now I have two section breaks and three sections. So you can see that I'm in section three right here below the second section break. Click above it, I'm in section two. Click above the first section break, and I'll be in section one. So in the middle between those two section breaks are my bulleted list. So let me go ahead and click on columns, go down to two, and it only affects the section, section two. Not what's above in section one, nor what's below in section three. Awesome. Now the only difference between that and when I click on breaks and a next page break, 
Well, the next page gives you a new page, just like you're inserting a page break, right? But it also says, okay, at the top of that new page, I'll section it off. I mean, you can do that. You can just go ahead and go to the top of a new page and insert a continuous. Or if you know you're going to be creating a new page and you want the top automatically sectioned off for you of the next page, then do it this way. It hits two birds with one stone. It gives you a new page and it sections off the top of that next page, okay? Let me click off and then to go ahead and delete your section breaks, you have to go ahead and find them which good luck if you can't see them there. And you see how I clicked, so my cursor's flashing in front of it. Hit the delete key and it deletes it. And now it's back to a single column here. I still have my section break here, but it undid my two columns as well as deleting that uh, section break. So let me go ahead and hit undo because I want to put it back to the way it was. So now I can move on to the next part of the training video and that's the column here, or columns. I'm looking at this column right here. And you see how I have a paragraph code there, and that first bullet is not aligned with the uh, second bullet in the second column? Well, in fact, how does this work? At the bottom of page 1, the column starts off, and then it scrolls over to the top of page 2, and then it flows over to the top of page 1 in the third column, and then it flows over what it can't fit there to the top of the fourth column on the same page. So if I want to come up here, okay, and click before clove and hit enter, notice when I hit enter, it's actually continuing on the first column. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to push this bullet point down so I can have the same amount of space as, well, as the paragraph code gives me from this first bulleted point to the uh, paragraph above it. So what I can do instead, let me go ahead and hit undo, is click after the first column here and insert a column break. So if I come up here on the page layout tab to the breaks and go down to column, it inserts a column break and there we go. This column is now broken off from the second column here so that's why we now get a new paragraph code. So you can see that it's even Steven here. We've got two paragraph codes, both the first bulleted points in the first column, the second column will line up and it looks fancy. So I can come down here and watch what happens when I hit enter and I start typing, hit enter and I start typing, hit enter and start typing, because that's still part of the column here. It's gonna fold over into the top of the second column. It's not going over and spilling over into that column because we have the column break. It just actually pushes that column over and flows into the uh, third column at the top of the second page. Unless, of course, I want to go ahead and break that off as well so it has its own column and it pushes everything over as well. So I can go ahead and hit undo a couple of times there really fast. So I'm back to my column break there. And then I can go ahead at the bottom of this and insert a column break. Whoops. With all these codes turned on, I missed this bulleted point here. I don't want that bulleted point to be there, so let me go ahead and hit the backspace so I just have my paragraph marker and then come back down here and insert another column break. So when I insert that, it separates this column off from that column, so at the top of the next page, we've got a hard return, and then I can do the same thing to this column, come down at the bottom of that, insert another column break, and there we go. That's how I can get those paragraphs at the top of each one, so when I start typing again, and hitting enter, and hitting enter, it pushes that column over, spills over, but it doesn't flow into that second column because of the break. It got pushed over. Oops, let me scroll to the top of the second page. Okay, so there's the uh, second column, and because that's broken off from the third column, that's got its own. It doesn't continue on now. Otherwise, the lemongrass would be right below lemon. So you see how those column breaks can separate, well, bulleted points, but also text, so it doesn't flow together, but actually breaks them off. That can be very helpful, especially if you want to go ahead and emphasize certain parts of the column by having it broken off from other parts of the column here with a column break. So when I come up here on the Home tab to turn off my codes, which is really helpful because looking at all those codes is annoying, you can see, oh, this part of the column is completely separate from that part. So whether I have more text I can keep typing and add it, or I don't have hardly any, this other column doesn't look at that column and get jealous and say, hey, you've got all this extra space, let me come over. It can't because we added a column break, okay? And then, of course, when I turn them on, it's the only way to see the column break codes. Go ahead and select it, hit delete. Now it says, hey, we no longer have a border here. Welcome. You can come over here and invade our territory, metaphorically speaking, of course. Now there's other options with your columns here. By coming up here on the Page Layout tab, going to the Columns drop-down arrow, you can do one column, two columns, three columns. You can do left, right. You can have more columns, get more choices, where... Instead of the defaults here of three, you can actually scroll this up to five, ten, twenty. I'm not sure how many you can go ahead and max out at. 
And then with your columns, you have the width of each column, which is the total for the two columns, six inches. So we have three inches over here, three inches over here, and then we have spacing in between the columns a half an inch. You can see the preview window over here that if I increase that, it shows you how it's going to start collapsing the width of each column. So we have 2.7 now inches for each column with a 1.1 inch spacing in between the two. And I can go ahead and click OK and you see how it just gives me more spacing in between the columns. Let's go back up here, click on the drop down arrow, more columns. You can also put a line in between your columns if that helps. And you can have equal column width or you can go ahead and uncheck that and say for column one, I want it to be 2.7, but for column two, I want, you know, four inches. Of course, when you do that, you may want to work with your spacing. So if I do, you know, 3.5, hit the tab key, it collapses the spacing. So I have one column smaller, the other column bigger, or again, make them equal. And then do you want to apply it to this section? this point forward or the whole document. Well, what's the point in applying it to the whole document if I have section breaks because I just want in this section to have my columns applied to, well, these bulleted points. So I'll just go ahead and click off, leave it at this section, click okie dokie and oh, there's my line. Then let me come up here, click on the home tab, turn off my codes so you can really see what it looks like. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.